Hello friends and welcome to another little art tutorial. Today I will share with you the process of a watercolor still life painting. And this tutorial video is part of the Love Summer Art event which is going on on YouTube right now. If you haven't checked it out yet, you can find all the info about the Love Summer Art event in the info box below the video. When doing watercolor paintings, I usually start with a rough pencil sketch with a rough pencil outline of what I want to sketch, want to draw. Um, yeah, and uh, usually I'm working with a reference image most of the time or sketching, you know, in nature or outside. But this time um, I'm not using any uh, specific reference because I've been drawing, painting a lot of like treasures of the ocean, uh, like seashells and stuff uh, lately. So um, I kind of... Um, yeah, came up with this setup um, of shells and some thriftwood and the starfish um, just out of my imagination. So right now you can see me uh, lay down a first layer of watercolor, a very light um, layer of watercolor. So like the first glaze, which kind of um, yeah gives me the direction um, of color. I want to go with like the elements. So really remember with watercolor you can always go darker but it's really hard to go lighter once you've put down a dark color so really start out very light just um, uh, with a tad hint of the color you want to use and then go darker add in the um, texture and the shadows and for the first glaze of color here um, I mixed uh, like different hues of a brown, brownish yellow, yellow ochre and I just used my um, Talents of Amsterdam watercolors here and mixed different variations of ochre, burnt umber, burnt sienna so just that you have kind of different um, hues of the same undertone and I'm also working with lots of water right now because again I just want a very light glaze of color on the paper. So in the next step I'm actually using the same colors I mixed before, just a little more intense. So I'm just adding um, less water to the colors I mixed, okay? And I'm adding a little more texture to the elements already. And for the tree, for this bark of the tree, for this fifth wood, I'm kind of using a little bit of a dry brush technique here. As you can see, I'm kind of holding the um, the brush um, like flat <laughs> to the paper. Can we say that? I, yes, you. I guess you know what I mean. Um, so <laughs> uh, that you know, the brushes barely strike the paper, and this kind of leaves a little bit of this texture on there, which is really nice because, like, the bark of the tree usually is like has a rough surface and this kind of gives you this um, texture okay um, and as you can see now I'm working on the starfish and I'm using like different techniques to apply the color onto the paper like dabbing the brush or like scratching it uh, across the paper um, of course you could achieve different looks with different types of brushes but uh, <laughs> I'm kind of a lazy guy, <laughs> lazy girl. No, I totally love my aqua brush. Um, this is the Pental aqua brush, and I usually take it with me everywhere I go for sketching on the go, sketching on the road. Um, and I'm kind of just got so used to this um, aqua brush that I barely <laughs> work with any other brushes, to be honest. Uh, I just totally love to work with it. I'm so used to working with it. So um, just in case you're wondering why I'm, you know, working with the same brush the whole time, I have a huge variety of brushes at home. <laughs> but I just love this brush. So um, I'm just kind of using it in different ways with different uh, application techniques. But I'm sticking to the same brush throughout the whole piece. And if you would like to learn more about those different techniques, um, you might want to check out my online class, Sketch Your Life, which is all about 
capturing your everyday life and sketching your life um, one piece at a time. <laughs> so you might want to check that out. You can find all the information about that um, following the link in the info box below. And I'm already starting to block in some shadow into the darkest areas. And for the shadow, I'm usually using um, like a purple, a mix of purple, a grayish purple, um, purple blue. So those are kind of my go-to colors for um, for shadow areas, depending on the light situation. And as you can see, I'm just going darker and darker, layer by layer. Okay, I'm, and always remember to kind of leave some of the underneath layers shining through, so you don't want to cover the whole <laughs> the whole piece or the whole element with a dark color because we definitely want the texture in there and we definitely want the underneath layers of color peeking through in the lighter areas. And to really bring in some texture and definition into your elements, really work with different uh, variations of brush stripes and, you know, like uh, thicker brush lines and thinner brush lines and um, like holding the brush um, like uh, in a 90 degree angle to the paper. So really different brush strokes uh, give you a whole different look and kind of make all the difference okay as you can see in between the steps I'm kind of lifting some of the color back off with a paper towel if I want um, the colors to blend a little more in some areas and also if I want to kind of lift some of the color back off in some areas so that's possible but make sure um, to use this technique only as long as the colors are still wet because once the colors are dry they are pretty much permanent and it's hard to lift them back off the paper. And I'm just adding a little more of an orange hue to this um, starfish and also to those little chunks uh, down there which are like supposed to be amber, amber stone. <laughs> and now I'm filling in more shadow, you know, the shadow there, the cast shadow, the elements kind of casting onto the sand underneath. And again, start with um, a purple with adding lots of water, so with a very light um, shadow, and then you can always go darker in some areas. And right now the whole piece, all the elements kind of have more or less like a natural color look. So very neutral, natural colors. But I kind of wanted to go for a little more like a tropical look. So I wanted to bring in some very fun colors. And that's why I'm using my Twinkling H2Os now, uh, which are also watercolors with a really nice um, glimmer or shine to in it, you know, almost like metallic effect. And I'm just using um, a brown to kind of give a little bit of shimmer to some of the um, neutral areas. And I've been using this pink on this larger shell, which kind of gives it really nice uh, tropical uh, feel and look. And I know the camera can catch this like um, 
this shine of those twinkling H2Os, but they really look awesome. And next I'm just using um, my brush loaded with some twinkling H2Os and just tapping my finger onto the brush to add some fun uh, like paint splatters to the background. Um, it's not everybody's thing <laughs> and that's okay, but I totally love it. I just kind of like this uh, splattered look. adding even a little more uh, darkness to the shadow areas because remember like the the mix of the darkest areas and the lightest areas and the mid-tones that's kind of what uh, gives dimension to your piece and to the elements so really want to have a good like contrast in there to bring in some really fun bright juicy colors um, and to kind of add to this tropical feel, I'm using my um, Sig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. Um, I totally love to work with them because the colors are really intense and you can really work very nicely with this real brush tip. So those markers really have like a brush tip and not like a felt one, but it's like a real brush. Hence the name. Okay, <laughs> so I totally love them. The color is very, very intense, and you just kind of apply the color to your piece, and then you can go in with a brush and blend it if you would want to. So um, I totally love to kind of add some finishing touches and some um, accents to my pieces with those markers. <music> Now I'm using my white Sharpie paint marker. This is the water-based one. And I'm kind of using it to bring in a little more light and to add some highlights and some catch lights, especially to like this shiny surface of this uh, larger shell, for example. And I also love to use the marker to kind of um, yeah, just tap it um, with my finger and then it kind of adds some fun white paint splatters um, onto the piece. And I totally love that look. Yeah, and now I reached that point where I wasn't sure if I was done or not because I kind of like that, you know, plain watercolor look. But if you know me and my work, you know that I totally love to kind of give um, like a loose sketchy outline to my uh, pieces and to use some cross hatching just for a little more of a whimsical look. And um, if you follow me on Periscope, you might have caught my, my scope <laughs> the other night um, asking for your tips um, and for your opinions if I should go for outlining or not. And yeah, what I did, I just scanned the whole piece um, so that I have both versions. Okay, so I scanned the plain watercolor version and then I jumped back in with my black um, uniball eye pen and the fine tip waterproof one and I started my um, outlining work because it just I don't know it's just more me and it kind of adds more texture and uh, more contrast and yeah it kind of gives a little more of a whimsical look which is just more me so um, it, I cannot really, in the end I like both versions to be honest, um, still can't decide which one is my favorite. Maybe <laughs> maybe you will have a favorite and um, I will show you both versions in the end, at the end of the video. So maybe you have a favorite then uh, let me know which one you prefer. Um, yeah, but um, I totally had fun outlining this whole piece with uh, some loose sketchy lines and adding some like uh, cross hatchings here and there and some tiny doodles uh, just because it's me and it's totally fun and I love this look. <music>
and to kind of bring the pastel background and the black outlined uh, centerpiece a little more together I added some black paint splatters to the background which kind of um, is nice uh, like um, connection between the background and the foreground and now I'm adding some more catch lights some more highlights with my white sharpie and just some tiny doodles here and there to kind of finish the whole piece off I'm done the piece is done I totally hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope you enjoyed the end result of this I uh, hope you like it and again um, at the end of the video now I will just add both versions and I even added a third version where I added kind of a little bit of a, a title to my page um, I just added it in Photoshop uh, you know digital so yeah let me know in the comments which one is your favorite the plain watercolor one or the one with um, the cross hedges and the black doodled outline um, yeah excited can't wait to um, see <laughs> the tendency in this and see which one you like better um, so thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time bye